Okay, now let's talk about another different set of uh, topics. We have discussed about different macromolecular level of biology and micromolecular level of biology. Now let's talk about a pure biological purpose, pure microbiological purpose, which is uh, which is normally called the general microbiology. In this general microbiology course, we will discuss about food microbiology, discuss about the water microbiology, soil microbiology, air microbiology, and uh, medical microbiology. And a little bit uh, more uh, about combining all these things and environmental microbiology. So, these parts actually deal with small microbes, which which are the causative agent of different diseases in us, because food is, is a very very important part of our life because we all need food to survive to grow to divide and to make offsprings uh, to make all the thing impo important because food gives us what he called energy we use food to make energy via <coughs> cellular respiration okay so that's why in this set of uh, tutorials we're going to discuss about uh, the food and how the food can be spoiled by the small microbes and uh, and how can we prevent the food to be spoiled because as we know it's a it's a summary of uh, statistical studies that uh, almost one third of uh, world's food get uh, get hampered by these microbes so if we can prevent this damage if we prevent this damage or we can minimize this damage that would be really really helpful for us because there are many countries many regions in uh, in our country India there are many regions where people can't find food uh, and they die uh, for the lack of food so you can give uh, this food to those developing countries those, re those regions of the developing countries to support them to support their uh, their breeding to support their life that's why it's important to understand to understand uh, the food born inless and the food food poisoning we need to understand uh, the food and f the food contents and we need to understand a little bit about these microbes and how the microbes cause uh, disease in, in uh, cause cause different damages in food and when you take those foods how can you determine whether the food is disturbed or not so let's talk about that. So this is a, almost a lecture summary in the first page, which, which, which I have enlisted: the microorganisms in food, food preservation, food borne inless, and fermented foods. So we've talked about. We'll talk about all these things. And in the last part of our discussion, we'll find out that these microbes uh, are not only can distort food, but they they can be useful to make different food. Some of those foods which are really really delicious to us, and which is a part of our daily life, like breads, curd, uh, yogurt and uh, wine beer and all this uh, really really cool things so how can you do this by controlled manner of these microbes okay so so one thing i want to summarize in this uh, state that we have microbes in our hand these microbes can uh, distort food so we have food here so it can distort food it can damage our food when it damages our food our food no longer do s anything but we can use the same microbes to make food when you are making food we make we make benefit with this food so when we are doing this we are doing this in controlled manner so when the microbes and the use of microbes is in our hand when it is in our hand then we can make out of it we can make food out of it we can use microbes to make different delicious foods different variety of foods but when it is uncontrolled when when the growth of microbes uncontrolled in food it will spoil the food it will damage the food so that is the basic summary so now let's talk about food i have talked about that the one third of all, all manufactured food is world is spoiled or is lost so uh, why they are lost because of the microbial content what do we mean by the microbial content microbial content means some microorganisms like bacteria uh, most of the food damage is done by bacteria and fungus and some of those uh, molds uh, we can say in those fungus generation gen generate those molds which which will damage this really via qualitatively and quantitatively in both both the directions so if we are talking about the food damage <coughs> or food spoilage we want to talk about something about the shelf life so before going to that why this microbe will damage the food because they also need food like us they also need protein lipid carbohydrate like us so this is plc this protein lipid carbohydrate uh, this these parts or, or, or these are the macromolecules that builds us and these are the macromolecules that build everything like every living organism like bacteria too 
so they also need protein lipid and carbohydrate so we have our food uh, we store that food for our helping purposes to taking this protein lipid carbohydrate from them but the bacteria took toll on it and they snatch our food they eat our food and they make up and when they eat our food they stay in our food they stay w w the, the difference between them they are really really small and the food particles we are storing is really really huge for them so they, they are actually stored they are present in those food particles to damage them and when they are damaging them so whenever a food particle for example in this background picture we have seen in this this apple whenever sorry whenever this uh, food particle uh, this apple is affected by different bacteria this apple is uh, this apple is damaged and those those bacteria will present in the apple and whenever it happens we need we need to discard that food because we don't have an, any other choice we we do not take a chance to eat this food further because we know if we eat this food it can make us any damage why the question is why why it is a damage for us if if we eat this bacterial eaten food because bacteria are still present in in, in many vig vigorous amount for example billions of bacteria present in, in this food to to make this food uh, characteristic appearance like that if we eat this food that will uh, that that can bring us diseases how can they bring us diseases and why because those bacteria can cause diseases as we know how bacteria cause diseases bacteria cause diseases by different many ways they can secrete some of the proteins which are harmful for us which is we, we, which we call toxins so when we eat those toxins those toxins go into our mm, body and sometimes the toxin acts on our intestinal tract and sometimes they can they can attack our nervous system sometimes they can attack our muscular system and all these different systems so we want to prevent this damage that's why we need to discard those foods and that's how the food is lost Oh, so now let's talk about the shelf life of food. So, what is a shelf life of food? So, some of the food are normally not normally. What what those foods are? Those foods are not favorable for bacteria. So, so, so suppose there are different variety of foods. Some uh, some of those foods are really really favorable for bacteria to attack on and to lean on. Especially those foods which are full of protein contents, like eggs. Those are called perishable food. Perishable food for bacteria they just come in and have a fun with uh, in in those cases okay so egg and uh, for example let me tell a uh, fish meat and all these things will be that though egg has a covering but still it is a very very perishable food for bacteria because it is delicious it has protein it has lipid it has it do not have carbohydrate but it has protein and lipid which is really really important for the cellular growth and division and second thing is a semi perishable food what do you mean by semi perishable well the name suggests is all that the, these semi perishable foods are not uh, that much favorable like perishable but it is favorable for bacteria like bread bread is actually hampered by not only bacteria it is hampered by molds is a bread molds out there which which you find in bread when you when you leave bread for some time you can find this this greeny uh, skin velvet color appearance come into this breads uh, bread and uh, this is why to different mold attack into the bread okay and if we look at uh, and, and 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 the final one is a non perishable food normally those foods which are not favorable for bacteria bacteria do not attack those foods uh, normally or generally those are called non perishable like for example pasta it is so dry the water content is so low and it, it is not attacked by bacteria so that is non perishable why are foods perishability depends on different things so what is the shelf time shelf time is the time uh, for a food to be to be safe and to be as it is uh, in its uh, primary characteristics okay so the perishable food have really short shelf life semi perishable have little bit uh, bigger than the perishable food and the non perishable food have the longest shelf life okay so if if we store a uh, if we if we uh, if we store a meat and also pasta uh, individually in not in refrigerator in, in outside the refrigerator in normal room temperature the first uh, the, the first uh, thing to be damaged will be uh, that meat not the pasta because meat is a much more perishable food okay so this is the basic concept about perishability so what are the diff what are the basic conditions that uh, that is uh, triggering the food spoilage well the conditions are water content water content of the food 
the pH of the food, the physical structure of the food, oxygen and the temperature because all these things uh, are correlated with the growth and division of bacterial cells. Bacterial cells need water to grow because water, every single living organism needs water to grow. So bacteria needs to. So bacteria needs water, that's why the water content. If a food have a lots of water content, they have a probable high probability of catching those uh, bacteria into this food. So though there will be really perishable foods. So fish, uh, meat and all these things have lots of water content in them because you can find it when you cook a meat or fish, you, uh, you cook a meat then you can find the water is coming out from it. Okay, because it's, it's a tissue, tissue contains water as we know. Now let's talk about pH. pH, if the pH is lower, uh, uh, we have a optimum pH, not uh, everyone uh, or every organism have an optimum pH to work with different enzymatic reactions uh, which is going on them. For example, bacteria. Bacteria have an optimum pH. So this optimum pH for bacteria are normally 6 to 7. So this is the normal pH or near neutral pH. In this near neutral pH, all the enzymes in the bacterial cell works properly. So they want uh, food which have the pH of 6 to 7. Then they can grow, grow and divide really rapidly. So normally, and in case of molds, this pH variations is little bit of acidic. So they can grow in acid contents like 2 to, two to 6, uh, 2 to 8. So their, their uh, actual window is really higher for molds. They can grow in acidic content and slightly in basic contents too. But they are favorable the growth in the acid contents. Okay. Normally, below four and below four or three pH, we cannot find bacteria to grow, grow because it is hard. It is it bacteria for a hard time to grow in the pH of four and three or a little bit below that. That's why the acidic food is not a good choice for bacteria. Acidic food is a good choice for molds because they can grow in acidic content like pH two and three. That's why it's a good choice for them. For example, we have the acidic foods like this. In this case, this tomato, this tomato, and and this this lemon, uh, and these are the acidic content because we have acids in them. So these food are not generally attacked by bacteria; they are attacked by different molds. You can find in lemon. If we if we cut the lemon and uh, and, and leave it uh, like that, you can find it. The molds will grow up like a velvety structure of molds. You can find it. Okay. Uh, okay. Now let's talk about the physical structure. If you want to talk about the re physical structure, physical structure is also important. But if you have a hard structure, if you have a really strong structure, if you have a really hard sh hard sheen on in the background of it, that will be really difficult. That will be really difficult to enter. For example, these dry foods here, the flower. So these are not on, not generally be and been attacked by bacteria. So we can store them for a long, long time. They do not have the water content and they are really, really hard. So if you have a watery uh, part, uh, that will be really helpful for bacteria because bacteria can move, um, can swim from one place to another place. They can uh, enter really from one place to another place. That's an uh, important thing. And all uh, most of the foods contain water, as we know, because if we don't don't uh, drink water, but still we can find water from the foods because foods are having water. There are not some of these extremely dry foods out there, but we don't generally do not eat use water, and we use uh, to to make this extremely dry food watery when we eat it. Okay, so that's why physical structure is important, and oxygen and the presence of this oxygen is also important because oxygen is need to carry on the cellular respiration, as we know. So oxygen is needed. That's why. Uh, if we have food, the, 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 those are an, uh, those are stored in anaerobic condition. Actually, food have oxygen because food is excess to all the time in the oxygen. So, if we store them in anaerobic condition, like like in a can, uh, in a can or in a, in a can like this, uh, which is a yogurt is packed. This anaerobic anaerobic environment, we do not find some of those bacteria can can uh, can enter into this. Why? Because oxygen is needed for many bacteria to grow but we also have bacteria that do not need oxygen to grow they are anaerobic bacteria and those anaerobic bacteria can grow in, in uh, without the presence of oxygen okay and finally the temperature temperature plays a key role is a big role in in the division of bacteria because optimum temperature as we know in case of bacteria and molds there are there are opti optimal range of temp temperature to grow on for this, this in this temperature, the bacterial cell will grow and divide rapidly. So the optimum temperature normally is the room temperature, and many uh, for the many organisms it is 37 degrees Celsius temperature, where we used to incubate them uh, for our uh, for our study purposes in laboratories using incubator. So normally the range will be uh, for 25 degrees Celsius to 40 degrees Celsius. This is a good range for bacteria to be 
to grow to have a growth so normally in india we can find this growth temperature in, in summers because summer uh, in india the temperature rise to 45 degrees celsius temperature and that's why in summer the foods are really spoiled really really quickly because in this growth range we have different types of bacteria work together most of the bacteria can be active in this range and uh, we call those bacteria as mesophilic bacteria so what do you mean by mesophilic bacteria mesophilic bacteria love the, to grow the, in between this window of temperature 25 degrees celsius to 40 degrees celsius and, but if you store them below 25 degrees celsius temperature for different countries if, if you store them but still they are they can they can be spoiled but not by these mesophilic bacteria there are different sets of bacteria they can spoil this below 25 degrees celsius temperature for example uh, for example 5 degrees celsius to uh, 15 degrees Celsius in in this temperature range there are different bacteria to grow and those bacteria are called psychrophilic bacteria or sometimes they are called psychotrophic bacteria the psychrophilic bacteria can grow in relatively lower temperature than those other bacteria and those bacteria can also spoil foods so actually they are not destined to spoil food they actually come in to to eat food so they eat food but this our problem that we can't eat those foods which which are uh, which are uh, what you can say contaminated by bacteria if we have fine bacteria in our food we need to discard that that's our choice and i recommend you to do that as a microbiologist okay so these are the conditions that that controls the food the growth of microorganisms in the food or you can say these are the condition of food spoilage so how can we if we manipulate this conditions if we manipulate this condition really tightly then we can stop spoilage for example if we release the water we, we can make the food dry that will be really really lower chance for uh, for the spoilage and after drying the food if we make the food in a little bit of acidic pH for example vinegar for example different sauces they are not normally uh, caught up by these bacteria because the pH content was really really lower 1 to 2 pH is really really hard time for bacteria to go and enter and divide in this pH and physical structure is not plays a, that that much key role but oxygen is uh, also important so if we if we make those foods canned in in an air, an aerobic condition we can uh, prevent the damage uh, of those of those foods by those bacteria by those aerobic bacteria but the anaerobic bacteria are there and also the temperature so the main key event to manipulate it during this food, food preservation is the water content the ph of the food and also the temperature of the food if we control these regions this part of the food to do for for temperature control we have refrigerator if we store this refrigerator refriger normally in refrigerator the temperature is 5 degrees celsius or like that you can store these things but still psychrophilic bacteria can grow on under refrigerator too remember but normally in in our environment in environment like india where the normal uh, or room temperature is almost uh, average temperature is 30 degrees celsius there we, we cannot find more of those psychrophilic bacteria but in in the countries where the temperature normally belongs to 10 to 15 degrees celsius then you can find the psychrophilic bacteria and in those regions uh, this refrigerated condition needs to be more little bit or uh, maybe less temperature than this 5 degrees celsius temperature okay okay now let's talk about the microorganism growth in food. Uh, so what are the factors that govern the growth of food? We have talked about all these factors. So these factors are called intrinsic factors and extrinsic factors. Extrinsic factors are the factors which come from the outside of the food, not present in the inside of the food. For example, temperature, relative humidity, uh, the contaminated microorganisms, so the content of microorganisms, all these things come from the outside of the food. So these are the extrinsic factors which, which controls the microorganisms growth and which is which is the intrinsic factor intrinsic for factor is the factor of the food like that composition of the food the water content of the food the ph of the food the physical and biological state and the appearance of the food and all these things is 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 a property of a food that's why it is called the intrinsic factors so whenever we change an extrinsic factor or intrinsic factor then you can change the microbial community or microbial population so if you change the population of micro microbes then you finally make a change in all these factors and finally it leads to uh, the damage of uh, of our foods okay now let's talk about this intrinsic factor we've talked about the composition of the food so what the food is made up with the food can be made up with different protein contents it, it will be made up with carbohydrate it can be made up with lipids or fats if it is made up with protein contents the microorganisms are, will be there to take this protein and in those foods on those uh, this, those foods we call uh, and normally uh, the division uh, and the breakdown of protein can cause different different damages in that food how would be the damages because protein is a structural component it can be a structural component of a food and when it is a structural component of a, of a food when a microbial microbial, uh, microbial enzyme attacks this protein and the protein damages 
then it ends ends up with uh, with the with different order and we call them the putrefaction we call them putrefaction so this is the term which is used this is really really bad handwriting i'm sorry very very sorry for the p u t r i f s c t i o n this is a putrefaction that means the damage of proteins found in food by the microorganisms okay and also the carbohydrates can be damaged the carbohydrates can be damaged um, damaged and we call it fermentation normally we are really familiar with that when the carbon dioxide is damaged by different microorganisms different anaerobic microorganisms we call them fermentation okay okay and if we damage this this lipid or the fat portions uh, we can we can make this damage and we will form fatty acid and glycerol which are the which are the component of fat and that will make th this fat really really order orderious and all this and so if we, if we damage this fat that will be really noxious and really bad smell uh, is coming from the food when, when the fat is degraded okay so these are the different types of reactions that can be go on when the food is breaking down by those bacteria okay so this is why that's why the food composition is really important if you have carbohydrates we can form the fermentation as a result of it the most of the time when carbon carbohydrate containing food are digested by bacteria it it forms of various bubbles or we can say uh, it's a different bubbles or uh, foams like this foaming or bubbling will occur here in this case of thing okay when a when a proteinaceous food is damaged uh, it produces noxious odor by this putrefaction reaction forms a noxious odor and very bad smell and very very bad taste to it and when the fatty acid is breaking down then it also forms a fumigation and also it, it is it is uh, it is just a very it is it again produces just noxious smell and all these things okay so sometimes the carbohydrate when it's fermented can be eaten but but mm, the uh, the protein uh, when the protein product is damaged or the of the or, or the lipid product is damaged it cannot be eaten because they are really really bad okay the hydrolysis of fat can be happen putrefaction of protein can be happen and the fermentation of carbohydrate can be happen during uh, the uh, the food spoilage now ph is also important we have talked about it before the presence of availability of water that's an important quantum uh, low low water available in the foods no problem but higher water availability is always a hard problem oxidation reduction potential this is a potential for the microorganism so if the microorganism have a, a huge amount of oxidation reduction potential so if there some enzymes which which can do this oxidation reduction uh, really well then this redox reaction can damage this food really really quickly And, and and this oxidation reduction potential of food uh, the food particles will be really altered when it is cooked okay now let's talk about physical structure we have talked about that the presence of antimicrobial substances that's also an important content so if we have a food and always also the the food is contaminated with some bacteria then uh, then if if we trigger the temperature if we add water then it, this bacterial culture will grow really rapidly so the content of bacteria is really important among the food because food is always uh, surrounding by air and air is full of microorganisms uh, as we know air is always full in different organisms microorganisms and those microorganisms can sit on this food and if we do not rinse them well if we do not make them well, make those food stored in a good place then this food can be damaged okay so normally a food particle uh, to be damaged it needs many many uh, amount of um, bacteria to damage that food because uh, because those bacteria because the food is a small particle and to to have a visible damage on it we need a lots of bacteria to work together if we do not have a many bacteria then then the visible damage is is not uh, the damage is not visible enough okay now let's talk about the extrinsic factors in the extrinsic factor we have temperature if we lower the temperature which which retard the microbial growth if relative humidity is another important point so the higher levels of relative humidity means the higher water content in air that helps the micro bacteria to grow and also the atmospheric condition for example the oxygen oxygen promotes growth as we have told and if the oxygen content is going low some of the other bacteria can come on but there are really less amount of anaerobic bacteria uh, than the aerobic bacteria in normal environment because normal environment is full of air so the anaerobic bacteria are only found in really anaerobic places but we cannot generally find aerobic bacteria anaerobic bacteria in our uh, this atmospheric content if we make this food stored in anaerobic conditions then it's 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 a good job for us to prevent uh, 
mm, those food to be spoiled okay we can use vacuum technologies to seal uh, the can or we can use scanning uh, to to f to make pack the food food in controlled uh, atmospheres uh, without oxygen environment and now let's talk about the microorganisms in food so as we know we have talked about this putrefaction so what is putrefaction putrefaction means the proteolysis and an aerobic breakdown of proteins yielding fouling smell so this is a foul smell which is a really bad agnoxious smell of amine groups because if we look about amine groups amine groups deliver this foul smell because in this case what you are doing we, we have the proteins so when you talk about proteins protein are the polymer of amino acid so they are linked with each other via peptide bonds we have a polypeptide chain which is break down by proteolysis by this by what you call a putrefaction when some microorganisms are there proteolytic enzymes are there proteolytic enzymes are there as a result of their action this food particle uh, this this protein will be damaged and small amino acids are derived and sometimes those amino acids are break down and, and the amino group comes out this and this amino groups delivered a foul smell which is really really bad for us and we cannot just eat them we cannot it's really, really hard to eat them and ph impacts make up uh, the microbial community and therefore uh, types of chemical reaction that occur when microbes grow on food and that's important because when the protein divides it, it remains in the normal type of ph if you do not have the charged protein charged amino acid particles there okay so this putrefaction step is important so when we have this protein the the different microorganisms are there to damage these proteins because they have several enzymes to damage these peptide bonds between them so that's why the protein particles are really favored hot peak for microorganisms to grow on and to take take on okay and let's talk about the water availability we know that if we have less water then it's a probable chance of uh, to pr prevent those microbes to grow on the food and if a higher water it will 